What's up, everybody? Once again, it's Brand Man Sean, and this video is brought to you by BrandManNetwork.com because I signed myself. Now, today we got to talk about why your favorite artist might not be touring and the way that touring and the whole industry and approach to artists are taking is completely changing and how you should think about it as an artist, manager, or even just a fan coming up if you want to get an understanding of it because there's three primary things. Cost right? Then we have brand. And thirdly, we have monetization. And I'll explain what those mean, especially when it comes to monetization. We're looking at touring completely differently than before. You'll see why. So cost is something straightforward that a lot of people don't understand, though, still. And that's just the fact that tours, not only do they cost a lot of money, they cost a lot of time and they have all these other things that are just difficult. So when I say difficult, I'm talking about the fact that it's hard on your health. You have a lot of artists like Rick Ross who really face some health issues being on tour. He says, hey, today, look, if he does a tour and he has to go through that, that gauntlet, he'll do 15 dates and he needs some rest in between. Like that's just not the lifestyle he's trying to live anymore. And so many artists that have toured seriously before will tell you it is not difficult. I'm talking about sleeping on the bus, sleeping on random couches sleeping in other random places some people <laughs> aren't sleeping at all and it's not like it's glamorous i go to this city this city this city but when you go to these cities you often don't have time to enjoy the city but once again this is coming off of your health you have to establish a routine trying to figure out how to work out and eat right all these things because it gets expensive especially if you aren't somebody like beyonce who could afford to have all these things done for you to keep you on schedule but i'm gonna move past that because I feel like people will get that, right? Touring is hard from so many different directions. Brand is where it gets really tricky because there are four different types of artists when it comes to touring. And one type of artist is the ideal touring artist. And what I mean by that is you've gotten your name to a certain level, right? And you also have an established demand that's constantly being met through your touring. So oftentimes I look at these artists as the settled in legacy act. So these are people who were, you know, hit making artists or had their real good run. And now they're not really trying to push things heavily publicly. They're not worrying about the main numbers, but they have this established fan base that they can always feed because they represent the good times of when these people were younger. They can always go back to these fans. And then you have the established indies. So this could be a newer artist it doesn't have to be a legacy act but because they've established themselves they never necessarily hit mainstream but they're established they can hit that fan base again and again and they can constantly tour making sure that they're meeting the demand outside of that the other three artists have a lot more to consider and a lot more nuances that can make it difficult to tour the first of these artists are the one hit wonders. Now, a lot of people don't understand when you look at artists like Lil Nas X, right? Lil Nas X has a big hit, but he hasn't toured yet. And it's so many other artists that have been like that because when you are a one hit wonder, you have to consider the fact that people just like you for this song. So how are you going to perform if you don't have an entire set to perform, right? How are people gonna go to your show, a full blown hour plus show, if you don't have more than one song that people really, really rock with? It makes it difficult, especially when you're talking about the level of Lil Nas X where you have to find the way to make sure that you're making music that people actually care about outside of just that hit song, which is a certain energy. So even maintaining that and figuring that out can be hard for a lot of artists. Secondly, we have artists like Cardi B, right? And, and Cardi B is a unique situation. And what makes her stuff so difficult from a brand perspective is she actually rose pretty quickly, became this phenomenon. And with that happening, it made it difficult to actually have a tour because you do know she can meet demand on tour. There's a lot of people that would love to see Cardi B. But with that being said, she has a particular allure to her brand at this point because of the level that she's reached and how quickly she reached that. Because even if you think about Cardi B's Coachella performance, I think she said something like she might have get paid thirty or seventy thousand dollars, something like that, for that performance. But she ended up putting three hundred thousand dollars down just for the stage setup, 
that's just one particular show. Now imagine taking that show on the road because she had to put in 300K because she has these brand expectations. It's going to be big at that point. So it gives her a different kind of difficulty from her brand standpoint to actually be able to deliver a tour that of course you can bring out numbers, but now meeting expectations is another thing that brings all these other factors into play outside of the difficulties of having a tour. And of course she has a kid and things like that, which is getting farther away from that point but especially that time when you know she was fresh out with a kid that's a whole another scenario then thirdly a huge level of artists that has its own complications are those superstars that have been there been there for a good amount of time and they aren't necessarily legacy acts traditionally even though technically they are because they've been around for a while but they're still trying to play that game where they hit you on a certain level. And those are people like Nicki Minaj and Jay-Z, where they're still doing stadiums and certain types of venues and kind of experimenting with what level of tour can I pull off? How big can I pull it off, but still be able to sell out, right? Because for them, of not being able to sell out is also an issue, right? It's still kind of lowering that brand allure. So you have to figure out what's that marriage, what are the numbers, how many dates can I do, and this is something that you kind of do at every level when you really get things out, but it's really a little bit more complex when you already have established brand. You've done plenty of sold out shows, but it's hard to fully detect right how much your brand has waned. And that's a completely different level of brand to keep up with. Now, with those in mind, you'll see some of the justification for it because that last but not least factor is the monetization and why this is so important and why it's evolving how people look at touring as a whole it's simply because how the industry's changed, how the fan bases have changed, because you might have heard me say things like Cardi B hasn't toured. You might have heard me say Lil Nas X hasn't toured and that might have confused you. But what people don't understand is they're doing what I actually have suggested plenty of times to young artists who have nowhere near the level of fan base or awareness that those other artists have. And that is essentially using other events that are already occurring right, and then actually schedule yourself for those dates and then from a flyer and marketing standpoint you can actually push that as a tour because these people aren't having their own national tours yet when we're looking at cardi and we're looking at lil nas x and and so many other artists that are kind of start to reach that level and the reason is pretty much a combination of so many of these things so if you look at the fact that they're going to festivals these huge festivals and then tying it together marketing it kind of as a tour in its own right it's still not the same as a national tour where you're going everywhere Right. And when you go everywhere, you're taking all these expenses with you and you have to figure out all of the logistics. They're just handling more so the stage, which is expensive still, because if you're on a certain level, it's still expensive, but is nowhere near the expense and headache as fully running a tour. Whole nother story. So with that in mind, why are people allowed to do that? Like why, why is the tour possibly dead in one form of fashion for so many artists? Because when you look at an artist from the standpoint of the fact that, yo, I got a one hit wonder. I'm Lil Nas X, right? I can show up and maybe get 50K just for this one show. Well, I'm sure his numbers have exceeded that in so many ways, but I'm saying you can just show up from a, for a walkthrough, a public appearance and get 50K, let alone performing at certain events, right? Then it's not necessarily worth all those other headaches because if I can go to all these festivals, the industry has changed where there's so many festivals that exist today and I could just pop up at all these festivals and call it my show or I could just pop up at festivals with a combination of some solo events and then still call it my tour in some form and fashion, then I'm still getting to be able to reach that same demand that I have out there without having to take on the full expenses as opposed to just doing a regular national tour. So it kind of doesn't even make sense especially when you're looking at so many of these festivals and things like that and these public appearances and they're giving you money to show up, right? And then do your tour versus the tour coming from the other end where it's more so, hey, like this is all your money, all your money in, then you get back. A festival's basically like, yo, show up, we'll give you 100K and then you do your thing, whatever you decide to invest in the stage and then you go home. That, that headache isn't there as much. It's a different level. So this is bringing in an interesting way of approaching how you tour today. Now again, 
There's a lot of artists that don't necessarily have this opportunity, but once they hit a certain space, this is a truly opportunistic way to go about it, a truly logical way to go about it from a business model standpoint. Right? Even if I don't want to have a full tour, I can have a tour that combines these different types of events. The only problem with that, though, is it doesn't allow you to control the full experience in the same way as a traditional national tour where you own everything and that's why an act like cardi b still needs to do it right they still have to get things going but you also don't want her to lose her hotness right she does it too late and now she starts to end up in that situation where a nikki or a jay-z is where of course once again these people they have their level they're still successful a lot of people want to see them but they might not hit those sellout sellout numbers that are a lot more superficial sometimes from a standpoint of you know the magazines billboard and just the industry's perspective you got to protect your brand because when people don't perform at these festivals and don't have the numbers, it actually affects other parts of their business. That perception can be a real thing. People are analyzing. We think about fans so much, but so many times when we wonder why are they worried about these other metrics, they have other deals that they can make based on other parts of their business. Where did my song chart? What did my tour look like? All of these things, right? All of these things that are symbolic of potentially are you hot or not or how hot are you at the moment? So even if you have a show that costs $100 and then it doesn't sell out, but it still makes more money than a show that costs $75, it still might have an interesting impact on your brand that you wouldn't like as opposed to fans paying $75 for a ticket and it actually selling out. Some of the stuff doesn't, once again, make sense strictly from the maximization short term of the of the money, but from a long term, the brain and some of the other things that people can leverage, it just happens to have a certain look. That's a part of that game that gets a little bit more complicated. Now, in terms of an upstart artist perspective, again, you can still utilize this same model. It's not that different. How do I go to the four states around me and the other cities around my city find other events being put on by promoters, other artists that are coming on and all that stuff, right? And then say, hey, do they have a similar fan base that what I would like to? Can I pay to get on this artist show, right? I just want to open for this artist, but I'm still going to be there to tap into the fans that I have in, in, in this area because maybe if I pay, if I got fans, if I'm looking at my analytics and I see I got fans in Nashville, Tennessee, and I can pay $200 to get on this show and based on what I look at when it comes to the fans I feel like I can make that money back on merch and it still allows me to make that touch point versus having to pay the overhead to do something else right and I get a relationship out of it okay could be a smart way to go about it and I could do that from from city to city to city and maybe I have my own show that I control everything in one location wherever my home is right there's different ways to go about it tours are no longer a monolith and how they have to be handled because of all the things that technology has given us access to. It's just how much do you pay attention and leverage it? How creative do you get? Because what artists or just a lot of people in general fail to understand that business success requires as much creativity as art does itself. You just have to figure out how you can apply it to work for you and maximize your own situation. So. That's it for now. I would love to know how you guys think about touring, where you see the industry going, or how you might have creatively made a tour happen for yourself. Other than that, as always, this video is brought to you by BrandManNetwork.com because I signed myself. We help artists build their brands and build the infrastructure to grow their fan base. If you like this video, go ahead and like button. If you like it, might as well share. And if you're not subscribed, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe.